Do you want to know how to invest the lazy way? Check out our passive investment ideas for busy or our clueless people. Stick till the end of this show. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. And if you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka on this road. Today, I want to talk to you about how to invest the lazy way. I'm talking here about passive investment ideas for busy or clueless individuals. Now, what do we talk about when we talk about passive investing? It really just means that you are buying and hold. So this is a buy and hold portfolio strategy for long term investment horizons with minimal trading in the market. You're not a day trader. You're not a swing trader. You just uh, buy and hold. Index investing is perhaps the most common form of passive investing. And uh, this strategy allows investors to replicate and hold a broad market of indices. What I'm trying to say here is that passive investment is not only lazy, quote unquote lazy, but I love it. It is cheaper. It is less complex. And guess what? Sometimes it produces superior after tax results over medium to long term horizons than actively managed portfolio. So you got to really understand that. So active traders are those who are buying, buying and selling, right? Those are day traders. Those are swing traders. Those are market tra- market timers. They're trying to beat the, the market. And then you have passive trader, passive traders. So passive investing has many benefits. So if you, uh, for instance, you have lower fees, as I said earlier, you have lower fees, you you probably can focus on something else. You are able to have a, a well diversified portfolio if you are able to buy different asset classes and different products from different asset classes. Of course, you have to be, whether you do an active training or passive training, you need to diversify your portfolio. You also have lower fees and operating expenses than actively managed funds. So an index fund, for example, offers simplicity as an easy way to invest in a chosen market because it seeks to track an index. So there is no need to select and monitor individual managers or choose among investment themes. Let me kind of, again, elaborate a little bit here. The key benefits of passive investing are ultra low fees, transparency because you know which assets are in an index index fund for example tax efficiency because the buy and hold strategy does not typically result in massive capital gains tax for the year and it's simple the thing here is that a lot of proponents of uh, active investing they would say that passive strategies have uh, a few weaknesses right they might say that it is too limited in other words Passive funds um, are seen as limited to a specific index or predetermined set of investments with little to no variance. Thus, investors are locked into those holdings no matter what happens in the market. That's one drawback that the proponents of active investing would say about passive investing. And you also have, they also say that you have potentially smaller returns because passive funds, by definition, they will pretty much never beat the market, right? Even during times of turmoil, because their core holdings are locked into track the market. What about the benefits and limitations, uh, the benefits and limitations of a passive investing? You have flexibility. I already said that. So active managers are now required to follow a specific index. Here I'm talking folks about the pros and cons of passive investing versus active investing. Because guess what? Active investing also has uh, some pros and cons. Otherwise, millions of uh, investors would not have adep- adopted that strategy. So with active investing, you have uh, flexibility. You have hedging. That's, not, that's very important because active managers can also hedge their bets using various techniques such as put options, short sales, and they're able to exit specific stocks or sectors when the risks become too big. We've talked about rebalancing portfolios every now and then. If you you can only do this if you are in an active strat, an active investment strategy, because passive managers are kind of stuck with the stocks that the index day track holds, regardless of how they're doing. Also, in terms of in terms of uh, active investing, you have tax management, because even though this strategy could trigger a capital gains tax. Advisors can tailor tax management strategies to individual investors. For example, 
they might sell investments that are losing money to offset the taxes on the big winners. And this is this is kind of similar to what I was saying earlier in terms of balancing your portfolio. Now, we know that active strategies, even though they also have uh, some pros, they also have cons. They're very expensive. They you have to constantly manage risk. And uh, some of them, some of the active managers in the market in the last 20 to 30 years have produced a poor track record because uh, and we, you, I think Warren Buffett famously said that uh, the very few actively managed portfolios beat their passive benchmarks, especially if the taxes and fees are accounted for. So I, I have been talking a little bit about um, index funds and, and I want to spend some time just to kind of uh, explain what it is. So index funds are mutual funds linked to a particular market index. So the goal here is to mirror the performance of the underlying index they track and therefore those funds are passively managed. So the underlying securities don't change unless the composition of the index shifts. So f if you're an investor somewhere somewhere and then listen to me right now, this means to you, for you means lower management cost and lower turnover rates, which makes those index funds more tax efficient vehicles than many other investments. So you can save money by investing in low cost index funds. So let's say, especially this is kind of cool, especially if you're thinking about retirement and you're thinking about where to park your, your Roth IRA or 401k money. It is kind of cool to put that money in those low cost index funds because we know in, in the long run, again, in the long run, the market always goes up. You can also gain diversification at a fraction of the cost. So if you are, let's say you are a small investor, we have, we just finished the show about fractional investing. You might want to double check that show also. It's fantastic. But if you are a small investor who wants to replicate, say, the S&P 500 by directly buying shares of each of the 500 stocks, you would need to spend thousands of dollars in commissions and invest millions of dollars. And this is not true for larger investors who typically pay half a penny per share in transaction costs due to rebalancing or other adjustment transactions that are handled by a software program. But for you, this could be a problem. One thing I also want to say is that low cost index funds exist for all asset classes. So they have become so popular that nowadays, and guess what? There are funds that cover all types of investment mandates and asset allocations. So you can invest in an index that tracks, among other things, small cap value stocks, consumer staples, so that's what you want, energy stocks, and international pharmaceuticals. So the expense levels for these funds are reasonable. And the thing here is that the low cost index funds are very simple. So if you go to the new players, uh, the new quote unquote kids on the block, such as the Robin Hood or M1 Finance, or you go to the more established uh, companies and more, more established firms, such as TD Marriage Rate, Charles Schwab and Morgan Stanley, you would see that there are index funds that are completely inappropriate for new investors, but there are gazillions of funds that are there for newbies also. But let me give you an example of uh, an index fund that will not be good for you if you're a rookie. If you have an index fund that, hold, that holds asset in foreign currencies, this may not be really good for you because now we're talking about a larger level of diversification. And it has consequences not just in terms of market risk, but also in terms of foreign exchange risk, but also in terms of uh, international risk. So that's a little too high. But just keep in mind that overall, a low in a low cost index funds it's simple it can be simple it can be complex depending on what you need i'll be right back right after this do not go anywhere <laughs> welcome back folks to another edition of the awesome sweetie kiwi show we're actually having a conversation here around um around um, how to invest in stocks the lazy way and in the first in the first category i was just talking to you about just buying an index fund the second category here if you want to invest in stocks the lazy way actually not just stocks just in invest in general not just stocks because uh, we want to have this we want to make this conversation broader here so how to invest the lazy way so of course you invest in, the, in an index fund 
The second category here, you can use peer-to-peer -peer lending. So peer-to-peer -peer lending. This is a great opportunity. To be. Sometimes it's called crowdfunding, even though peer-to-peer -peer lending is a little, it's slightly different from crowdfunding. But the, the great thing here is that peer-to-peer -peer lending means that you are directly lending money to a person or a business entity where you as a lender and the borrowers are connected via online platforms such as Lending Club and Prosper. So the returns here are great, folks. Returns typically range from 7% to 12%. And there is very little the investor must do after initial, initially funding the loan. So if you have a couple, couple of thousands of dollars or a couple of hundreds of dollars sitting around or under your mattress and you don't know what to do with it, you can really, really invest it. And this is a lazy way. This is a way to invest the lazy way. You have nothing to do. Just put your money and that's it. The great thing here is that the P2P platforms, they will do the due diligence for you. And that's a great advantage. So you don't have to spend time making sure that the person you're lending the money to will actually will, um, will uh, pay you back. In the news lately, though, we've seen that, um, we've seen that uh, some, there has been a, a slight increase in the default rate for loans that, that were affected uh, on those platforms. For example, the Financial Times and other sites have, have said that um, um, a site such as Zopa, actually it, it's not, it, it, th that company rather, had a default rate of 4.52% for loans granted in 2017. So the point I'm trying to make here is that whether you are using a P2P lending platform or you are you so you are a lender through a p2p platform or you are a traditional bank you still have the risk of default but again at the end of the day there is no investment that does not carry risk so if you want to go things thing if you want to do things the lazy way you have no time to think about you just want your money to uh, to earn more than the one percent of the 0 0.0005 percent that the bank is giving you then yes a p2p is a great um, is a great uh, alternative so the top two in the industry are Lending Club and Prosper. Number three, if you want to invest the lazy way, you can just buy dividend stocks. And those, the, those kind of stocks are one of the simplest ways for investors to create passive income. So you have to understand that as public companies generate profits, a portion of those earnings are softened off and funneled back to investors in the form of dividends. So investors can decide to pocket the cash or reinvest the money in additional shares. So dividend yields can vary significantly from one company to the next. It really depends on the industry, the sector, and those yields can even can also fluctuate from year to year. So if you're not sure about which dividend paying stocks to choose, then you want to uh, you just google it there is something called the dividend aristocrat so the dividend aristocrat is um, it means that the company has at least a 25 year track record of paying out substantial dividends so if you want to if you want to invest in a very e easy and lazy way just buy a dividend aristocrats all right just google it and you will you will really see it now the, the people who love dividend aristocrats, they will rank them according to additional factors such as company size and liquidity. Liquidity is things for the ability, the financial situation of the company. Do they have enough cash in their coffers? So companies that are able to maintain high dividend yields, they are relatively, relatively rare and their businesses are usually very stable. So those companies, those dividend aristocrats tend to have products that are recession proof which allows them to keep take, to keep taking in profits and paying dividends even when other companies are struggling. So there are usually fewer than, according to research, there are usually fewer than 100 dividend aristocrats at any given time. So in 2020, there were just 64 dividend aristocrats who were listed among the, the S&P 500. So those, and the great thing is, is the diversity. You can find them in many sectors. I'm talking here about healthcare, retail, oil and gas, and construction. And uh, the, the thing here is that you have to understand, and let me give you a few names. You have AT&T, this is a great uh, aristocrats, not a great aristocrats, <laughs> a dividend aristocrats, ExxonMobil, Walgreens, Post Alliance, and AbbVie. 
if you don't have if you're not able to find a dividend aristocrat you can also identify other quality dividend players so a stable dividend policy the, the thing what you need really if you don't want to invest in a dividend aristocrat because they're stable and they don't grow that fast you need to see companies that have dividend policies that fall into three categories so you have a stable dividend policy a constant dividend policy or residual dividend policy so if a company has a stable a stable dividend policy for example the shareholder can expect steady and predictable dividend payouts every year regardless of fluctuations in the company's earnings if a company has a constant dividend policy the company pays a percentage of its profits to shareholders every year so investors experience the full volatility of company earnings and the third category you have to be aware of is uh, what I said earlier, the residual dividend policy. So if a company has such a policy, it pays out in dividends whatever money remains after it has taken care of its capital expenditures and working capital. The fourth, the fourth way to invest the lazy way, just put your money in somewhere and just go to sleep and wake up maybe 10 years later on and see your money grow for you. The fourth way is to invest in what I call too big to fail Fortune 500 company. What are Fortune 500 companies? The Fortune 500 companies are the, the 500 publicly traded companies in the United States. The top 500 publicly traded companies in the United States. And the strategy here is very simple. All you have to do is to buy 10, 20 or 20 top American companies. One thing you have to do, and we're actually showing you on, on the screen right now, you would see on the screen right now, you, you got to go to fortune.com and uh, you just type uh, fortune 500 and you, you, you get the year and you would see. One thing you need to do is you need to diversify. It's very important, folks. You want to diversify by industry and region. The last thing you want is to have exposure to a single sector or two sectors. You want to you want to spread your cash across multiple sectors. The rule of thumb is not to be exposed to a sector by more than 5%. Not good. Not good. So you can see here that in, in 2020, the top 10 American publicly traded American companies were Walmart, Amazon, ExxonMobil, Apple, CVS Health, Berkshire Hathaway, United, United Health Group, McKesson, AT&T, and, and Amerisource Bergen. So those are the top 10, right? So. I would say right now here you have some kind of concentration in terms of um, in terms of a sector so you might want to maybe buy Amazon ExxonMobil Apple and you and um, and uh, vary a little bit right because you don't you don't want to have for instance be in the same industry you don't want to buy say United Health Group and CVS Health those are in the same healthcare sector so this will this will increase your uh, your exposure to health to the health sector so what i'm trying to say here is that just go go to fortune.com look at the list and buy companies those companies are companies that are solid they have enough cash and they are what i call systemically important when you hear the term systemically important you usually think about banks but those companies the companies like a company like walmart is part of the uh, the american economy and it has been for years so of course, yeah, Walmart is not going to grow as fast as say Tesla or Amazon, but guess what? You're getting your dividend every every quarter or every month or every six months or every year. And you bet that you'll be getting it for 20 years or 30 years or 50 years, who knows? I'll be right back right after this. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. I'm still having a conversation here around uh, how to invest the lazy way and how to just put your money uh, somewhere and just go to sleep and then you wake up, the money has grown. So the, another way to invest the lazy way, and this is for clueless or busy people. If you have no time to think about the stock market or the investment, the whole thingy, the whole investment thingy, or you don't have the resources, I'm talking here in terms of uh, the uh, the intellectual in other words you're not you don't have a knack for finance you have no idea what's going on you can just use the strategies that we are sharing with you in this video and you will you, you should be fine obviously i'm not providing investment advice here 
I'm just giving you, I'm sharing with you ideas. We have done research and we are, our team has done research and we are sharing with you the results of those, uh, of that research. So th this is something that you have to, of course, you have to listen to it. You have to do your own research and you have to make sure that whatever decisions you make apply, applies to your own personal situation. Another way is to buy what I call the too big to fail Forbes 1000 companies. This strategy is analogous to the earlier one that I was telling you about the Fortune 500. It's kind of similar because for the, the Fortune 500, that list focuses on US publicly listed companies, companies, right? Whereas the Forbes 1000 covers companies located throughout the world, including the United States. So let's say you just have again to go and buy the top 10 20 or 30 top companies on that list depending upon your your resources and depending upon your uh, your strategy again make sure that you diversify do not buy do not buy companies in the same tech sector you want to buy diversification i'm talking about geography here i'm talking about sector i'm talking about maybe uh industry there is a difference between industry and sector so as we're showing you right now on the screen, as of uh, October 2020, you would see that the top 10 companies, the top 10 global companies in terms of market capitalization are, so you have, uh, I have the list here, you can see on the screen. And the interesting thing is that five are Chinese, four are American, and one is Saudi Arabia. So you're talking, you, the top one is, uh, is Chinese, ICBC and going all the way to Bank of China. So if your risk tolerance is low, that is, if you want to be safe, you'd better pick US companies. But if you want to go international, pick stocks of companies that are friendly, quote unquote, friendly to the, to the United States and have a strong legal system. Because folks, the last thing you want is having your money in a company that is, that's been nationalized by a foreign government, for example, right? or the company is in the middle of a trade war, say, between the United States and China. So you want to go the safe way. If you want to go the safe way, I would say go for solid companies. And that is if you want to invest outside the United States, of course. You want to go for solid companies in Germany, Canada, Australia, or the UK. Those are quote unquote friendly, friendly uh, states, right? And they have a tradition of uh, upholding the rule of law. So here, the great thing about the Forbes 1000 list is that you can actually search by country or territory. So for instance, on the screen, as you can see, we have searched, we have filtered by Germany. You can see the top companies in Germany from uh, Volkswagen to um, all the way to uh, free, free seniors. You can see that you can also filter by the United Kingdom, by Canada. The last thing you can invest in, the last the last sector you can invest if you want to invest the lazy way, and this is if you're busy or clueless, you have no idea, you just want to put your money somewhere, you're tired of having the money under the mattress, not gener generating any cash, and you want to uh, get it, get the money out there and um, earn some uh, some revenue, you can invest in real, in real estate. Now, real estate is kind of tricky. Everybody says that that's true. There are fluctuations. This is an industry that is cyclical. It is linked to the overall economy. So uh, some people are scared about it, but research has shown that real estate persists as a preferred choice for investors looking to generate long-term returns. The goal here, the key word here is long-term. So uh, specifically, rental properties can furnish apartment owners with a regular source of income. So, you, you know, as an investor, you can uh, easily acquire a property for a 20% down payment, then install reliable tenants who will keep the money flowing. And now if you don't pay, if you don't pay 20%, you have to pay something called the PMI. That's a private mortgage insurance. And that that's tacked on to the monthly mortgage that you're paying. So, and that's if you're, if you're, if you're interested in putting your money there, if you don't have the time, because the goal here is to be lazy, right? You can actually, if you don't want to have the time to buy a property or to manage the rental properties, you can look for, you can look to uh, buy the the shares of something called REITs. So a REIT is a REIT, AKA a real estate investment trust 
they those are great because those are companies that invest in commercial developers so, some of them are even developers themselves in other words they build shopping malls they manage shopping malls they manage residential units that kind of stuff and the great thing is guess what REITs pay out typically 90 percent of their taxable income as dividends to investors so that's a big big advantage here on the downside though dividends are taxed as ordinary income which could be problematic for an investor in higher tax brackets right you also have uh, something called real estate crowdfunding this is a great because this is a great sort of a middle ground solution because investors have their choice of uh, equity or, or debt investments in both commercial and residential properties however unlike REITs crowdfunding lets investors enjoy the fiscal advantages of direct ownership including the, the uh, depreciation deduction with the without the added responsibilities of property ownership so folks this is about it this is really about it so I was talking to you today about uh, passive income investments how to invest the lazy way and this is a this is a quickie this is a quick tutorial for uh, people who are lazy or clueless and just want to invest and they want to to put their cash to work for them remember though that whatever you do you need to diversify you need to make sure that you have a diversified portfolio because not everything can happen the economy can go crazy and the last thing you want is to have exposure in a single sector and be wiped out you don't want that i will see you next time good best of luck and until next remember stay marvelous <laughs>